Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder Channel. I'm out today with Thermal Earth, who are drilling a borehole for a ground source heat pump. They've been here for a fair amount of time. They started yesterday. They've hit all kinds of problems. They've got flint jammed in the drilling rig. They've had to take the whole thing out, all the tubes out, all the way, clear the blockage in the drilling head, and then put it back down. And then as they go back down, other little bits fall in. So you could never tell what's going to happen with these drilling jobs. Sometimes it's plain sailing. You get a survey, it tells you what's there. And if you're lucky, it complies with that. But if not, then who knows what's going to happen. Anyway, they carry on. They're never beaten. They carry on and they will do it. But it's one hell of an operation. How far have you gone down now? Uh, we are around now around 45 metres deep. 45. And how far are you going to go? We're going to go to 125 metres. 125. You've got enough of those tubes there? Yeah, we've got enough there. <laughs> we had 650 metre holes in Sussex. Then we progressed our way up then to Harpenden, 500 metre holes up there. Same sort of geology as what we're having here. Chalk with flint bands, but you know, all this area, it's all roughly the same sort of yeah. set up. Yeah. So the idea of this water reservoir that you've built here, so this is what, recycled water? You can yeah, well, no, this? No, this is the stuff that's come out of the, this is the stuff that's come out of the hole. I've got my flush, brings it up to the surface. What do you find in the, what do you find in the chalks and stuff? You get, there's a lot of voids. That's the flint. That's, that's what you get. That's, that's the flint. Yeah. So but I'll make an axe out of it. How do you know when it's in there? When you just stop drilling it? No, what it is, I'm watching, I'm I'm watching my I'm watching the gauges. Yeah. I know then when my air has risen over what it should be at. Pressure. I know then my pressure is high, and I know that I've got a blockage somewhere in the length. So which would be the your target. kit up there, you've got a, a, a compressor. Yeah, we've got a compressor. So that's not a generator and a compressor. No, it's compressor it's just oh my a compressor. God. Diesel power compressor. It's, yeah. Um, a 24 bar, the biggest roll tower volume you can have. Yeah, yeah. So how do you bring that kit? In, yeah, we it? bring all. Yeah, we 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 all in house. We bring all the kit. Yeah. All all that goes on the lorry, we put, our, put the rig on the lorry, put the trailer on the lorry, and the fuel bowser goes on the lorry, and then we bring then the compressor with us then. Got it. Yeah. And that blue one, that's the fuel bowser? That's the fuel bowser then. Hell, yeah. Fuel, isn't it? yeah, we store around a thousand litres. You know, it just gets us through that time. You know, we can come up onto sites, and sometimes on a site, you might have 15 to 20 bore holes to drill. So it's ideal then to have that on site then, and you can move it around the site. So, you know, you've yeah. done, you know, it's nice and you your clothes, your feel will in straight out the bowser, straight into the into the into the compressor and stuff. Stops any part, you know. And, and this is a fairly tight site for you, isn't it? Oh, it's fair. So yeah, it's tight. Yeah. If the rig can go through the tightest gap, you're, we will be able to drill it. Yeah, yeah. another rod in there now see how we go and then i think if i am having it i'm gonna swap out over the clearly bit oh, yeah. i'm going for the hammer all oh, right oh okay you so you got like a tungsten head have you yeah so what i got them I and mean, i got at the moment you've got diamond in there like a piece yeah pcd bit three wing yeah real teeth on they're the soft just stuff they they, they they like it my experience a little bit of hard stuff here now so i'll see how the next one goes because you know she should be shooting through them like you know what i mean yeah, you know, like, yeah. but the, the, the flint is it's just breaking hard, like you know. It is, yeah, yeah. You're not going to get any pipes in today, anyway. Right. When you put the pipes in, you've got your hole. Yeah. What's the process for putting the pipe in without the hole all collapsing in? I've got casing. I case down into the chalk and the flint already. Yeah. As you go, you see the casing. Yeah. So I got about thirteen and a half meters of casing into the chalk and flint, and then I come back out then, and then from there on in, then you've just got like chalk and flint, and you can have harder chalk can have a bit more flint so that's where i am obviously i just i case through all the clays that could give you the squeeze of not holding the hole open yeah so i case through that and i've gone into the chalk and the flint and then 
down then progressed then all the way through then with the chalk flint um, but the, the chalk might get harder along the way so you don't think you'll get under the chalk into something else that'll be it um, no I mean no, we're looking at the records I'm going to say that we're going to only experience chalk and flint all the way really yeah yeah if you were going maybe 200 metres 300 metres you might experience something else might experience something yeah and then well, when you dig the trench across for the pipe yeah do you do that? Yeah. you got a little digger that comes yeah, in. Yeah, we did what we'll do then from one borehole to the other borehole, down to the chamber area. The other borehole? We need two boreholes. Yeah, we're going to have two boreholes. Oh, blimey. So what, the other one's closer, is it? Yeah, the other one then we'll do then around roughly 10 metres to 15 metres away. We have five boreholes running then to the chamber area. Yeah, yeah. And then you have your, from the flow and return then to wherever your plant room is then, guiding mm. on how far a distance that you have. We range then if you're really close, you know, you go then to different sizes. You'll have a 40 mil, 50 mil or 63 mil. That one was because it was a bit more of a distance. When you run these pipes yeah. together, is there a chance of one freezing the other or not? No. They're the, the, what goes inside them is like a glycol, glycol okay. with like a heat transfer fluid in it. Yeah, yeah. And then that will stop it then from, from, from getting cold, you know what I mean? So it is all, but yeah, you have no problems like that. Probably going to have a little, I might have a little swap over now and can progress over to the hammer. That is the uh, joys of this job on my previous project. I'm going to write pickle for two days yeah. and then one day then drop two two probes in one day. All oh, right. You know, uh, fill, yeah. Yeah. fill the full one in a day and put the pipe in. So I had two pipes. Yeah. But I ain't going to have that here. The chalk, and when I looked at the thing, it, they're saying that the chalk is a little harder around this area than what I saw. So, so Thursday now. Yeah. What, you stay here till it's done, will you? Well, I'll say we'll be going home then tomorrow then. You're going home tomorrow. This yeah. stays here. This will all stay here. Then we'll be back on Monday then. And then we'll progress further with it then on Monday then. So you're going to take them all out, yeah? Yeah, we're going to pull them all out now and change over the cradle bit. And not every cradle bit is for every sort of ground. We're obviously experiencing something a little harder here. Yeah. So we're just going to change over, change the cradle bit, and then progress then with that bit then down then to uh, the down to death. You say casually you're going to change over, but basically that means you've got to bring every single so one every, of those. Every rod that I got in there at the moment, which is roughly around about 20, they will all have to come out and then we'll put we'll change the drill bit at the end then and we'll put them all back in then and then we'll progress then with uh, the drilling and that's the second time you take them out today. yeah a little bit of a little bit of flint had gone in at, at the, it, and it was worked out the same size as the holes had gone in and jammed it couldn't release itself back out because it's so hard so then i had to, we had to take the drill bit off clean it all, get it all out, get it all back, and then progress again then. Yeah. And they're nicely greased up, aren't they? Oh, plenty of grease, that's the key to it, especially with the casings and stuff. Yeah. Do you know when you, and you wanna, obviously they're in 1.5 meter lengths, you don't grease those, and you tighten them, then yeah. plenty of grease, plenty of grease on them, and, and they then just separate. Yeah, yeah. What do you find? Half the time we've been using them, greasing them, like greasing them. You know, we was like yesterday when we was putting them on. You know, you've got plenty of grease, and I wire, you wire brush all your threads. Get your threads clean, plenty of grease, and then they, they'll just go together. And then you're only on the chain tongs for the last part of it. You know, mm. it's, it, otherwise it's, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good, yeah, you know? Yeah, Through them, yeah. The rod handler helps a great deal. Yeah, you know it brings it, it loads it. Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, it takes it takes a little bit more of the work away, you know. I like the spanner. Yeah, I love the spanner's yeah. great.
We're going to be coming back to follow this project with Thermal Earth and we're going to be looking at the range of ground source heat pumps from Kensa. So if you want to see more on ground source heat pumps, hit the like button, subscribe to Skill Builder and make sure you see the next episode.